Hello everybody, I'm Axel Wilkinson, here to take a look at the clone stamp tool in HipFilm 2 Ultimate. I'll be using this footage to do so. We can use the clone stamp tool to copy information from one part of the frame and clone it into another area. As a matter of fact, I've already done this to remove the logo from the side of this building. Did you notice? The anonymous building in this footage is in fact the awesome sporting goods store right across the street from my house. So, let's open up a new composite shot and take a look at how we can do this in HitFilm 2. First off, because this footage was shot handheld, I need to do some tracking to make sure that the effects all stay locked in place properly once we're done. If your footage is locked off, tracking wouldn't be necessary. In this case, I used a two-point track to make sure I get accurate rotation and scaling info as well as the position data. So, I set up two tracking points on the logo, which offers good contrast and clear detail to track. It also helps that this keeps the tracking in the same location as the final effect will be, so it'll be more accurate. I've performed the track in advance on this footage just to save time, but once we have our track finished, now we need to create a new point and assign the tracking data to that point. I'll rename this point to tracking, and then I can select my tracking data and just apply it to that tracking point. So there's our point. And you can see as we scrub through, it's locked nicely onto that building as it moves around in the footage. So now we can look at the clone stamp tool. So let's just drag that onto our footage and then we can double click that effect to open its controls. The first step in cloning is to define the area we will clone from. This is done using a clone mask in the effect controls. The simplest way to set this up is to use a plane. So let's create a new plane, which I will call plane one. And I'm using an initial size of 200 by 200. I'll click create and there's our plane. So we just want to reposition this so that it covers the first half of our logo here. I'm going to adjust the opacity down to about half so I can see through it and then just reposition and resize this plane so it covers the logo. And then I'll also adjust the rotation so that it matches the angle of the building here. Try to keep the plane a little bit larger than the area that you are covering because we're eventually going to feather these edges to blend the effect in and we don't want that feather to actually hit the edge of the logo or whatever it is we're trying to hide. So this plane gives us the size of the area we need to copy in order to hide this logo. So where can we copy from in order to do that? Well, with this footage, the best option is this spot right over here on the left. The entire logo is too big to copy from one spot, which is why I'm splitting this in half. So for this first half, we can just move this plane around to see where it fits that we could copy from to hide that logo. Now you'll notice we run into a light here because we can't fit our plane between the light and the edge of the building, but that's okay. We'll just scoot this over until the light is completely included and embrace the fact that the light is there. This is actually a helpful technique because by copying this light, we'll create a repeating pattern of lights running across the building, which will help the area that we're adding in feel like it was supposed to be there all along. Okay, now we need to set up a second plane as a clone mask for the other half of the logo. So I'm just going to duplicate our current plane. I'll rename the copy to plane two. Then let's move this over and resize it just so that it fits the remaining portion of the logo there. Now you'll notice that our plane overlaps a little onto this tree in the corner. If you have a keen eye, you may have noticed something odd with the top of that tree in the footage I played at the beginning of this tutorial. In fact, the plane does crop the tree off a little bit there. If you didn't notice, uh, watch it again and, and you, you'll probably see it. And we could use masks and everything to adjust the shape of this plane uh, to work around the tree. But for the purposes of this tutorial and keeping things simple, I'm not going to worry about that now. So, once we're happy with the shape of this second plane, we can just move it back over to the same location as the first plane, but this time making sure we don't include the light. Now we need to apply our tracking data, which we can do by simply parenting each of these planes to our tracking point. If we scrub through the footage a bit, you can see the track is good, those planes stay locked right in place there. 
So now we are ready to set up the clone stamp effect. So for the clone mask, we'll choose plane one. And in this case, we're gonna clone from the current layer and frame. So from this layer of our video footage and the same frame, we're just going to copy this area and move it over. Now we could copy from a different layer using the selectable layer, or we could copy from the current layer, but choose a different frame during that layer's duration to copy from. In this case though, we'll stick with the current layer and frame. Mask Blur lets us feather the edge of the mask, but I'm going to set that to zero for now and we'll adjust it properly later on when we can see more clearly what it does. So the clone mask tells the clone stamp tool the size and the shape of the area it should copy. Now, to specify where it should copy from, we use the source command. Now by setting up the plane where we want to copy from, we can very easily use plane one as our source as well to copy the size, shape, and position of plane one into the clone stamp tool. And then the target controls tell it where to stamp that area that it's copied. So we're gonna choose our tracking point and that will keep the pasted effect here locked onto the building as it moves in the footage. Then we can use these position controls to just offset that until it's perfectly positioned on the frame. Now at this point, the harsh edges of that copied area are pretty obvious and that's where the mask blur control comes in. So I'm just gonna shift this up over the sky so you can see those edges nice and clearly. We have those harsh edges, and now if we set the mask blur to 20, you can see how those edges are nicely softened so that when we bring that back down, it blends nicely with the footage. Okay, so there's a basic clone stamp right there. If we scrub through the footage, you can see that that stays nicely locked onto the building there due to our tracking and we're good to go. Now we just need to add a second clone stamp effect and set it up to hide the other half of the logo. We'll set this one up the exact same way only using plane 2 instead of plane 1. So for the clone mask we'll choose plane 2. We'll set the mask blur to 20. For the source we'll choose plane 2 once again and then for the target we'll still use the tracking data and then we'll offset that position until the logo is covered. All right, now in this case, it looks like my plane is just a little bit too small. It's not quite covering that once we added that feather. So I'm just gonna go back to plane two. I'll select that and then just increase the size of that plane a little bit. And our cloned area is immediately updated based on that change in shape. And there you have it. Now we can turn our planes off so that they're not in front of our footage there, and we can play this back to see the final effect. In more advanced cases, you can clone from other source layers or from a different time code on the same layer, but those are topics for other tutorials. Hopefully this one gets you started with understanding the clone stamp tool better and points you in the right direction for a bit of experimentation. Now, if any of you are fans of the Thumb Movies by Steve Odekirk, you know, Thumb Wars, Bat Thumb, Thumb Tannic. I implore you to consider cloning a face onto a thumb using the clone stamp tool, because I want to see it. I haven't got a chance to try it myself, but I would like to. And really, we always enjoy seeing what you all create with the software. So please share your results with us and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our continuous stream of new tutorials for HitFilm 2.